Working with Mike Campbell is the easiest job in the world because he can play anything and make it sound. I don't care what guitar it is, it's, the strings can be 150 miles off the fretboard and he can get it for five minutes and you, it's uncanny. How, I mean, it's just autopilot, really. Mike can play anything, so I set it up where if I can play it, I know damn well he can. So that's, that's all I have to, you know, to do is make it playable for me. I'm working on a guitar now that has some modifications. Uh, I've just recently had this idea to do a guitar for Mike, and it's kind of like a Frankenstein, you know, body design and stuff like that. But in November, a very good friend of mine, David Bryson, passed away. He was a monitor engineer and just a legend in the business. He went to England, or went to Scotland to see his parents and went down with a friend and died over there. They cremated him, and I was talking to his uh, widow, Lynn, uh, and she told me that they were gonna uh, spread his ashes off of Catalina. And I was you know, literally standing right next to the guitar, and I went, can I have some of those ashes? And she went, what? And I went, yeah, I want to put him in the, under the truss rod in this neck. And I did that and posted it on Facebook. And everybody kind of went, wow, that's cool. I only got two comments of, hey, that's weird. And Lynn was one of them. Mike loved the idea as soon as, because I, and then after he passed away, I said, I'm going to call this guitar Bryson guitar. That guitar has Fender bits on it. Like, uh, it's, because Mike just loves Fenders. You know, and Tom, you know, who doesn't? You know what I mean? It's just, you know, there's other companies and there's other things like that. But if you want a guitar that you can just run it over with a truck and still play it, you know, that's a, that's a telly. One <laughs> unintended mo modification that turned out to be something. His uh, broadcaster, the jack, was getting uh, all uh, loose and, you know, how they will over the years, especially that one. It's, what, 1951, two, whatever. Uh, so I replaced it with a, a jack uh, that that you screw into the body, and while I was in there changing the jack, I burnt the side of the guitar with a soldering gun. Uh, and when I was down in Corona with Nate, we to get the that guitar measured, I said, "Be sure and duplicate this <laughs> this uh, burn mark because I'm the one that put it there." And they did, which was very cool. If I had to give advice to any kids that wanted to do modifications, I'd say just get a, a cheap old guitar, something that you really don't care about, and just rip the damn thing up. I mean, it's not, you know, these days YouTube and stuff like that, there's uh, Stuart McDonald, Guitar Supply, does great books. Dan Irwine does great books. You can probably get, you know, I'm sure you could find some guitar somewhere, some flea market or something for 20, 30, 50 bucks, whatever, and just just try stuff on your own, you know, just, just, you know, because, you know, what's the worst that can happen? You get it wrong, and then you'd have to, you know, start over again. How did Leo Fender come up with that stuff? You know what I mean? This works, that doesn't, you know, right? Just uh, stay safe. Don't, don't shock yourself and blame it on me. <laughs>